scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Remember, I told us that Jesus raised disciples who would later become apostles through a system of discipleship that we called mentorship. And the way he started, very interesting from matthew chapter one two three four when he was done with his temptation he departed in the power of the spirit right from matthew chapter five until he resurrected every day was a bible study session every day was a prayer session every day was a mentorship session they were exact spiritual truth that he was teaching them he was teaching them on the kingdom reorganizing their understanding about various aspects of the kingdom life he brought many prophecies to lamb light and began to shed light on them he brought many perspectives misrepresentations about the god of the hebrews that they had known and began to correct them then he used parables parables to explain what he called the mysteries of the kingdom are we together and so when we get to the 16th chapter of matthew He's now talking about the keys. Now, theologically speaking, there is only one key to the kingdom. Everybody say to the kingdom. There is only one key to the kingdom. And that key happens to be the door himself. Jesus said it this way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh to the Father except by or through me. So we know that there is only one key to the kingdom. There are not many ways. Almost all of the founders of different religions around the world, out of the three to 5,000 religions we have currently and growing in the world, all of the founders propose to be the keys of the kingdom. That means they are the access point to enter into a certain dimension of life, civilization, consciousness, or reality. Are we together? We have several religions across the world with different founders purporting different facets of the revelation of God. But Jesus came and made a bold statement that he was and still remains the only authorized access. So there is only one key to the kingdom. The Bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved do you know why i'm teaching you this look up please look up the time has come in the church where we must be biblically sound we must be theologically sound the context of our spiritual communication must be balanced must be intelligent must be theologically sound you must be able to make full proof of your ministry defending the faith by understanding what you believe not just believing blindly are we together the days that we live in would require conviction conviction that comes not only through encounters but through understanding so i'm taking our time to teach you this because many believers are not mentored to understand god the average believer understands different aspects of power glory here and there but the sequential growth this kingdom has an explanation 
you need to know the way the kingdom was built and how it operates are we together yes so this looks like very basic but it's amazing the level of failure you will command not knowing this there is only one key to the kingdom there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved are we together the bible says in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 8 to 10 it says that um the word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth even the word of faith that we preach it says that if thou shalt confess with thy heart the lord jesus thy mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead he says you shall be saved are we together yes then it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made that leads to salvation so this is the technology that god employed so when you follow that door who is christ the bible calls him the new and the living way he becomes the only access point if you have not passed through that door you are not saved are we together it doesn't matter how you are around church you are not saved nicodemus came to jesus by night and said rabbi john 3 thou art a man we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him then in verse 3 jesus is teaching now and he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he's talking about being born again now he shall not see the kingdom of god are we together and then except a man be born of water verse 5 now and the spirit he shall not enter the kingdom so we know there is one key and only key to the kingdom but there when you get into the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom not a key the the basis for access that help us to function in this kingdom there are many the laws of the kingdom the methodologies of the kingdom you need access to just one key jesus the son of the living god the new and living way but when you come into the kingdom listen carefully you need to know that there are keys of the kingdom say keys of the kingdom and the sequence is this watch this a believers come you stand here face me please my friend please come stand here face me no you stand here are we together my dear come now watch this they represent different levels this gentleman for instance is the one the bible calls a natural man everybody say natural man that means one who is alienated from the life of god he is not yet a partaker of the life of god through the new birth experience that we call salvation is someone learning you have to understand what i am teaching you the first ministry that this man needs is not a preacher's ministry the first ministry that this man needs is the ministry that the bible calls the goodness of god listen very carefully the bible says it is the goodness of god that leads men to repentance so there is a dimension of the encounter with the goodness of god that this man needs to have and that dimension is sponsored by the holy spirit so the holy spirit is the one who can make this man even have the need see the need for jesus in his life john 16 jesus still in his mentorship session began to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the holy spirit jesus started by saying i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it listen carefully that when he the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth are we together he shall take of what is mine and shall give to you then the bible says that the holy spirit has a threefold ministry to the world the world of natural men he says he will convict you of three things number one of sin say sin 
number two of righteousness say righteousness number three of judgment are we together so it is the ministry of the holy spirit to bring this man to a point now he will need the cooperation of a preacher because the bible says how shall they hear except they be a preacher are we together are you understanding the methodology of the kingdom except they be a preacher so god depends on men to allow the ministry of the holy spirit to find expression now this gentleman is sitting in koinonia or any meeting and he hears the word of the lord coming and listen it is not any preaching that saves understand this it is not any preaching that saves there is an exact spiritual information that leads to the salvation new birth now all truth in the bible have a measure of light and liberty that they bring listen to me but there is an exact message that turns a sinner to become a righteous person are, are you following now this is a refresher course we are dealing with the things that many believers do not know that continues to make their life and their assignment within their environment ineffective now it is true that i can teach any message and raise an altar call but that even if it is in one minute there has to be a way of routing that altar call such that the content allocated to be captured for salvation is represented there are we together the gospel that saves is called the gospel of salvation everybody shout say the gospel of salvation now there are many gospels in the bible by many gospels we don't mean erroneous gospels the word gospel just means an announcement of glad tidings it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with jesus as it were it's just a proclamation of glad tidings the word gospel means good news are we together a proclamation of an information that gladdens the heart that's what is called gospel so there is the gospel of salvation and the gospel of salvation is a message everybody say a message the gospel of salvation is the revelation listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love a revelation of the father's love are we together manifested in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ and the object of that sacrifice is man first and then creation the death of jesus does not only affect men it affects creation are we together so the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son jesus to man first and then creation and then man's response everybody say response man's response to that gospel who had believed our report to that man the arm of the lord had been revealed are we together yes so when i hear the gospel what is the gospel for god so loved the world that he gave he proved his love for man by allowing jesus his son to come to the earth now watch this the assignment of jesus on earth was not to die death was simply a gateway to help him fulfill that assignment are we together jesus came to earth to fulfill a threefold assignment number one jesus came as a representation the image of the invisible god until jesus came they did not know god so they would they would accredit or credit both the things that were done by the devil fallen angels and god to the god of the hebrews until jesus came there was no bodily representation of the god of the heavens so jesus came as the image of the christ made manifest are we together the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as the glory of the father full of grace and truth and the bible calls him the image of the invisible god the invisible god that hitherto we only heard about and a few people had certain encounters of different dimensions of him that god is now personified in the christ 
so you can look at Jesus to know who God is Jesus came as the will the thoughts of God the word word of God is the word logos the thoughts the intent of a man seeking out for expression are we following tonight this is basic salvation that is not basic at all it is the strengthener of your Christian faith you have to know how you came into this life so Jesus came to reveal to men the image of the invisible God as a commitment and a desire to help men know God number two Jesus came as an agent of reconciliation the Bible calls him the mediator of the new covenant what does that mean the bridge like two aggrieved parties the word mediator is a legal term it's a system of reconciliation that means two aggrieved parties or at least an aggrieved party that has broken relationship and fellowship so Jesus came as the bridge but in order to fulfill that ministry as savior and mediator he needed to pass through the legal system of the spirit and there are ordinances that have been in the realm of the spirit that he had to subscribe to ordinance number one the soul that seen it it shall die it's a law that any soul that sins the penalty is death are we together yes ordinance number two without the shedding of blood I'm doing a quick review so that we'll just pass this area without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins no atonement no remission are we together so Jesus needed to satisfy that legal term number three that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone so only death leads to resurrection anything that is alive in itself cannot resurrect it will have to die and then resurrect with another life are we together now so Jesus being the mediator watch this number one he came as a manifestation of the image of the invisible God number two he came as the mediator of the new covenant to fulfill that ministry of reconciliation drawing men connecting men to God and he needed to route it through Abraham and by so doing fulfill the legal claims of justice the third reason why Jesus came was to perform his high priestly ministry you have to understand this that he is a priest after the order of Melchizedek that even in resurrection he had to take his blood the blood of the eternal sacrifice and he went before the tabernacle in heaven that was adumbrated by that that was on earth and he poured his blood upon that tabernacle so that once and for all salvation became real to men are we together yes so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus to the end that when you hear that gospel and believe that it is true that Jesus has satisfied the legal claims of justice that now standing before the throne you stand guiltless with the righteousness that is equal to that of the Christ are we together not like that of the Christ when you receive that report the Bible says immediately two things happen to you number one the first thing that happens to you when you declare Jesus as Savior and Lord is that there is a translation spiritually speaking from the domain the kingdom of darkness that means a domain that is under the legal authorization of Satan into the kingdom of his dear son now follow me very carefully are we together and then the Bible says that when there is that translation the second thing that happens and all these things happen concurrently is that by believing it is credited to you for righteousness like faithful Abraham I hope you know the first person to hear the gospel was Abraham our father the gospel was preached to Abraham 
in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed abraham believed god and it was credited to him and that formula of abraham is what was given to the saints to hear the report of the lord and to believe by faith then it is credited to us as righteousness People like Kenyon define righteousness as the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, without a sense of condemnation, and without a sense of inferiority. This is what he calls righteousness. I will want to add that more than that, righteousness is the manifestation of the nature of the Christ in a man. It's more than just an act. The manifestation of the nature of Christ in a man is called righteousness righteousness is first who you are by reason of your believing the report of the Lord now number three we are given the Holy Spirit according to Galatians chapter 3 Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord the Bible says being made a cause for us for it is written in the law of Moses, that cost is every man that hangs upon the tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. What is the blessing of Abraham? I've taught it here. Justification by faith. The blessing of Abraham is not a pronouncement. No. There are blessings of Abraham. There is the blessing. And there is the blessing of Abraham. Three of them are not the same. The blessing of Abraham is the justification that comes by faith. The blessings of Abraham are the speakings that came upon Abraham as an inheritance by God that we can route through the promise. The blessing is the Holy Spirit. Are we together? So the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon the Gentiles to give us now access to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the representation of the life of God. He is the one we call Zoe. Now listen very carefully. The word eternal life is not something the Holy Spirit brings. It is His presence in us. The Holy Spirit does not bring eternal life. The Holy Spirit is the life of God. He is what we call Zoe. He is what we call the blessing. Are we together now watch this this man let me come back to our, our terms now as we used this man has been convicted of the Holy Spirit and a preacher makes what we know to be an altar call this gentleman comes out receives the life of God acknowledges Christ as his Savior and Lord and according to the authority of Scripture the Bible says this man is saved because he believed in his heart unto righteousness and he confessed with his mouth the lordship of Christ step one everybody says step one this is not the end of the journey he has now entered into the kingdom he has had one key the key to the kingdom Jesus Christ now that he's in the kingdom watch this this man can remain unfruitful forever right now in the kingdom he's no longer a natural man but he's also not a spiritual man the bible calls them carnal men the word carnal means sensual they have not grown to the level now where their impulses are aligned to the word and the spirit he's not a natural man but he's not yet a spiritual man in experience are we together now many believers can remain at this level forever and be in church for 10 years and in honor to your longevity in church you can be called a deacon from a deacon you move to a pastor and then to whatever now humanly speaking you are making advancement but spiritually speaking you are still here are we together now watch this it is for this man that Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 was given that he gave unto some apostles listen now the fourfold or fivefold as we call it is about to be introduced now he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? To do the work of the ministry. I mean, for the perfecting or the equipping, the maturing it is called, of the saints. So that this man now matured will do the work of the ministry. 
are we together so the holy spirit is the next person to be introduced to this man because the word of god without the ministry of the holy spirit will turn this man to a religious man he will receive the knowledge that puffs up ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth the bible says for from such depart are you following me tonight so this gentleman gets born again the the sequence of spiritual growth is that for his health look up please for this man's health and his speed in growth it is important to be planted within a community of believers because being planted within the community of believers now will afford him the opportunity to be discipled an interesting word i'm introducing now say discipleship please shout it say discipleship it's a word that has been abused by religious um religious perceptions most of what we call discipleship in the body of christ is conformity to the doctrines and the patterns of a denomination but god's idea of discipleship is not conformity just to the patterns and the doctrines of a denomination or conformity to the central thought agreed upon by a body of religious people that's what most times we call discipleship is the reason why after many years of mentorship the people don't look like christ they look like the error are you getting what i'm saying now yes The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He started it, he should end it. So this gentleman is planted in a ministry like Koinonia. Are we together? Now he has an assignment. His assignment is to remain open and to know that now he must grow that growth is a possibility in the kingdom Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and Jesus increased in wisdom in stature in favor with God and with men this guy is saved but he needs to grow if he does not grow then Galatians chapter 4 becomes his tragedy are we together it says this I say then an heir for as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave although he be Lord of all but that he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed so an heir provided he remains a child bankrupt of the knowledge that provides growth that he does not differ from a slave this gentleman's next part of call is to grow everybody say growth the growth is threefold number one the first dimension of growth for this gentleman is to be brought to a point where the foundational pillars the foundational pillars of the christian faith are taught him i'm showing you how this person will become a powerful man tomorrow the foundational pillars the bible begins to tell us in in hebrews chapter 6 that leaving these basic doctrines let us move further to more superior things paraphrasing and he said the doctrine of baptism and of this and of that and of that there are basic foundational pillars of the christian faith please look up if this guy receives the best of mentorship he should be introduced number one to the value of the word of god in the life of the believer this is key it's not something he should learn later he should learn that in this kingdom the boundaries of god's commitment to us is scripture he must learn that the primary way of knowing god is scripture all scripture were inspired by the holy ghost profitable for reproof for doctrine for correction that the man of god may be mature fruitful in every good work are we together so this man must be brought to a point where he understands the value of the word of god number two this man must be brought to a point where he understands the foundational value of the priesthood ministry of the believer the priesthood ministry is not something he should learn when he's ordained into ministry by priesthood he should be able to understand the power of prayer as a system that transforms you and as a system that helps you 
to legislate in this kingdom when this man is not taught prayer early it will affect him are you seeing the sequence of growth number three this man must be taught the value of corporate fellowship and community life as a system for preserving kingdom values i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity are we together it is like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron down to his bed to his skirt his garment he said there the lord had commanded the blessing this man must be introduced to the foundation of corporate fellowship number four this man must be introduced to an understanding of his identity in christ it matters for this man to know who he has now become in christ the bible says in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 it says and if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise there are many things that the bible calls the believer for instance it says behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god is a name he must know number two the bible tells us that we have been raised up together with christ are we together he must understand that fact number three he must know now that he has become a partaker of the spirit whereby we cry abba father that this man has access to god according to hebrews he says let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help in time of need this man must know he has access to the wisdom of the spirit now he has access to fellowship he should understand this as a foundational pillar of his spiritual growth he must see the necessity of the fivefold ministry in his life as gifts given to the body to help mature him the next thing is this man must understand that he has a purpose and a destiny in christ it's a foundational understanding it's not something he should have when he graduates from school or gets married no the bible talks about believers being predestined according to his eternal counsel he must know that he was born for a reason are we together when this gentleman you are, this guy is stooping down to respect me his back will pain him oh stand, stand straight eh? he respects me and he's leaning like this god bless you for your honor that's how the world will bow before you eh? now watch this but, but you can you can stand you have you have tried let's 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 be fair on the gentleman praise the lord now do you know that when this guy now understands these things they are very strong pillars now he can begin to move to the deeper matters of the kingdom are we together what we call the mysteries of the kingdom he will now begin to understand the methodologies the ways of god he now begins to understand the keys of the kingdom he now begins to understand the mysteries that connect to the results that he desires already remember that the foundation of his life is god remember that he knows who he is in christ because this man is about to go through challenges somewhere in his life and if he's not told who he is in christ and the value and the power of prayer and he does not have a system of mentorship that will tell him he's all right this guy will be discouraged soon when you get born again there's usually a bonus for you whether you pray or not things just work you are jumping is to motivate you are we together and you look at believers laboring and you are like ah, ah you mean this thing is this simple it's an encouragement so that whatever comes your way you will know your life is in his hands yes do you know that this gentleman haven't completed this realm 
will now move to the next realm where he's mentored on the ways of God now I begin to teach this guy on the principles of the kingdom here is where we begin to show him mysteries in the kingdom that there is a mystery that connects longevity there is a mystery that connects exemption how favor works how giving works how the relationship with the holy spirit is built how the anointing grows the necessity for this this guy continues to learn and learn them again while he grows now this content is graduating this guy from a carnal man to become a spiritual man with proper mentorship he will get to a point where he becomes strong and mature his convictions are strong he's not only believing because a pastor said a prophet said an apostle said he has come into an a, a conviction about god watch this when he gets to this level the next assignment is for him to now be taught the principles that make him a battle axe thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war that you are not only in the spirit to grow alone are we together now that is time for you to mature and now become useful this is where you need to now understand the principles of kingdom advance what it means to become an ambassador what it means to be mightily used by god it is at this point this man begins to learn the laws of influence this man begins to understand the deeper dynamics of the power of the holy spirit you see this is how he started as a naive confused christian not knowing his left from his right and with a few months and a few years of proper discipleship look what he has become a mighty battle axe now look at this why are many believers in church for many years the average church has two to three services per week and after many years the believer is still here fighting for appointment fighting for deaconry fighting for eldership fighting for this and that and that and that and that and sometimes the pressure and politics of ministry will make the person to be ordained here as a pastor are we together now a baby about to lead babies he does not know anything about the things of god members say we don't like you and he says i'm not doing ministry again why because he's a baby he's broke and he fetches from church offering and says i will return it later he's a baby he has not seen the value and the excellence of service this guy is persecuted and he says god why me these are the languages of babes he says strong meter for them who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses unto godliness if i turn to god today and say why me is is an embarrassment um is, is, is an embarrassment to his investment in my life not at this level the difference between this man and this woman is that at this level you should have gained mastery the things of the kingdom you should not be learning how to walk at this level when you see someone who is you don't put babies on wheelchair but if an adult cannot walk you put him on wheelchair nobody puts a baby on wheelchair and say i said you should walk and you are not walking nobody prays for a baby for a miracle and say rise up and walk it is it is allowed in that realm but when you become an adult and you cannot walk it's an attack listen there are when people say they are matured as believers ask them what makes you think you are mature say i'm not a baby christian at all i'm not why what makes you believe say i've suffered in this life no that's not the reason why you are you are a mature christian not at all it is true that the fullness don't get me wrong please understand this it is true that the fullness of affliction can refine but suffering is not the reason why you are a mature christian you may be suffering as a result of ignorant attack that you don't have the knowledge for 
this person should be able to help this person in a heartbeat this person should be equipped with such spiritual knowledge listen if i come and say pastor i'm in trouble like an encyclopedia should just open which mystery is allocated to solve this man's problem this is the justification for being spiritual when you talk to this person and say um you know the way life is you are supposed to be here not here this person should have at this point had a covenant with god or be connected to strong covenants that even where his or her personal faith fails there should still be a way of routing results otherwise who brought you here who qualified you here are you seeing that a lot of baby christians continue to say they are much at this realm people can start falling in your meetings you don't need to get here right here in fact before you understand one impartation and you will use falling down and say watch Benny Hinn is throwing people, me too, I'm throwing people, we are the same. Whoever told you? Please understand what I'm teaching you. This is a refresher series that many believers do not understand. So the Bible says, I will give you pastors after my heart. Men of God, hear me. You have an assignment to build people sequentially. You must know what they are to become. Not hope that you are doing the right thing. Like an architect, when an architect is building, he does not sit down hoping that I hope the building is coming well. He has the master plan already. He's only hoping that you get to a point where you are able to understand. At this level, there is something you can tell God that will make God act in a certain way to this man that he does not yet have. It is one Lord reach unto all. But my brothers and my sisters, something you have done, a process of growth has brought you to this point. There is a level of relationship and intimacy you have with God. You cannot fear their fears. No, you cannot. If me and this guy pray, he's going to be frustrated. We can pray a general church prayer. But if he comes to the secret place to pray with me, this guy is going to be tired. He's going to pray from his realm. And he will hear me talk to God in a way that does not make sense. It may not even sound scriptural, but it is. There is a level. I will call God names he has not had anywhere. It's a name that my experience gave God. He can come to the secret place and see me sitting quietly on the ground like a herbalist and say sir let's pray i said that's what i'm doing and he said i i thought prayer is just when you are talking and rolling and i say yes just do what you are taught you are correct only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul sing it one more time yeah. only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul now listen don't worry you can stand back this is already a refresher course many of us are born again but I tell you why our lives are unfruitful. I can watch you pray for one hour and tell you at least 10 things you have done wrong. As serious as you are praying, I will tell you the part that will be answered and the part that will not be answered. I will tell you what was unnecessary in the content of your prayer. Now at this point, God will not show you because the goal is not the accuracy of your prayer, but the zeal of your prayer. So he will allow the error just pass 
there's no need for accuracy he's cultivating zeal you can pray and make mistakes the goal is that you become prayerful the realm of accuracy is waiting for you in the future so you will find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense but the more you pray the more God is backing it the idea it is easier to edit your prayer life when you have received the spirit of prayer and supplication when you are corrected here you will be discouraged when you get here you will find out that many things you prayed for were already answered in your growth you were never supposed to pray for them growth already answered that prayer request only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul please sit down sit down there are many people parading themselves as matured christians you say why you say i've been born again for 10 years what does that mean what does that mean it is true that longevity if well utilized that's time and if you invested in it spiritually the bible says that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting but he that sows to the flesh will reap corruption you can sow to the flesh for many years it does not mean you reap life are we together this thing i told you is the basic foundation of any believers Christian life if you do not know this you will leave God eventually something about the absence now imagine that where, where are you come imagine that this guy just got born again and the next thing he's hearing is a teaching on influence or a teaching on prosperity this guy is going to fail woefully do you know why because it is dangerous to be taught prosperity as a carnal man the flesh will not allow the purity of that message to bless you the message will fall on lust that is already there and it will make this guy a dangerously materialistic person so there is a sequence of growth not every topic is relevant to every believer imagine that this guy gets born again and his first message is love and and life partner and relationship do you know what is going to happen to this guy he's already dead even before the series on relationship is over because i can tell you this guy's prayer life is not going anywhere this guy's life is not going anywhere the awareness that there is a beautiful lady to see and marry would not you think he will pray the way you are praying that you are praying like a madman not when you are aware lady is looking at you no how what if i I, I miss the moment and the flesh is there deceiving you and you are failing programming woeful failure but if this guy is taught that the beginning of his life is God he can be praying like a madman any lady that does not like that demonstration does not like a profitable destiny yes sir There are people today who cannot pray in tongues because they were taught something before tongues. And what they were taught corrupted their passion, that reckless abandonment. Let me tell you, those days when we started ministry here, you would see the ladies, including hot CC ladies, when it's time to pray, they will roll under the anointing from one point to the other. They will stand up with the whole the whole paraphernalia rumpled to pieces it matters how we are taught it matters who defines your spiritual value who cultivates your hunger and your appetite for the things of God the keys of the kingdom now i said that because it was important to lay this foundation but in this refresher series my, my goal is really not to touch on these basics now i want to refresh and show us again and i'm praying in the name of jesus christ remember it's this week and next week i'm praying that what you did not see before may you see it now 
How do I know I have caught light? The results. The results show that the light has come. If the results cannot show with time, then the light never came. How do I know? How can I trust the content of the information I have? One of the greatest um, concerns and prayer in my life is not to believe a lie. That I should not believe something I hold true and find out after many years that I've been wasting my time believing in a lie. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness. There are things people have believed about prosperity that is punishing them today because the content was wrong. There are things people believe about church and ministry and ministry growth today that is making them languish in failure in spite of the fact that they are anointed. There is a, an exact body of knowledge allocated for the truths that you desire. And I'm going to run through them this week and next week. Can you lay hands on your head and command that in the name of Jesus your understanding is fruitful. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Speak to my mind, be open. Hallelujah. Now, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Let's go back, please. And let's deal with these issues now. Sincerely, it's my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ that we'll hold these keys and we will rise in a way and manner. The mysteries of the kingdom demystify life. They bring you to a point where you see that life is not as complicated as it looks. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Say, I receive it. And whatsoever you bind, the word bind there should not confuse you. Declare to be improper. A particular version says disallow. And then it talks about allowing. Now watch this. Notice the sequence according to Amplify. That it is what has been bound in heaven. You replicate it in the earth. And what has been allowed in heaven, you replicate it. So the keys are keys that allow you to replicate heaven. Remember the sequence is that it be done in the earth as it is in heaven. It is not going to be done in heaven as it is done in the earth. So realities are first finished in the heavenlies and then they are replicated in the earth. The keys of the kingdom. Still amplified Psalm 82. Let's start from verse 5. Still amplified. Very powerful rendition. It says, they know not. Amplified. Amplified. Keep amplified there, please. It says, the magistrate and the judges know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness of complacent satisfaction. And all the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking. Six, I said you are God since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. Indeed, all of you are children of the Most High. Verse seven, let's shout it together. One to go. But you shall die as men and fall as one of the princes. So the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge. The keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge. Specific knowledge that gives us enlightenment and authority. Access to spiritual truth. Access to information illumination these are the keys that make for dominion so the bible says there are things that have been permitted to walk in the heavenlies and there are things that are not permitted to walk in the heavenlies when you obtain the keys of the kingdom in terms of spiritual knowledge and information 
they are the keys that activate and deactivate possibilities in the earth realm these are the keys of the kingdom of heaven please understand i'm teaching now they are the keys that activate there are possibilities but they must be activated through knowledge and there are possibilities that can be deactivated for instance premature death is a possibility it can be deactivated like you detonate a bomb are we together long life is a possibility but it's activated delay is a possibility activated speed is a possibility activated mediocrity these are all possibilities in the earth realm and so he says i give you keys that means i give you access to i i will bring a file and run through all the possibilities available to mankind choose the ones to activate and set them ablaze in your life and deactivate all the ones you will find some already activated the average believer when he comes into christ when you are born either by territory or culture or ordinances there are possibilities already activated for you they were activated through covenants they were activated through yokes your assignment is to know the keys of the kingdom like a pilot sitting and say no i off this i off this delaying destiny i off this mediocrity i off this i put on the switch of speed i put on the switch of the anointing why am i a pastor with no members i deactivated he said i give you the keys of the kingdom please listen very carefully please sit down you will find the possibility of poverty activated and tied there many families to remain so but you come through knowledge and you find out that this is not a possibility in the economy of god and you are shown the key to bring it down and suddenly your life changes and they say are you not someone who is associated with this territory you say no more the keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom listen the bible says speaking to abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes and see that means from where you are you can go anywhere but there is a key that takes you there you don't need to go somewhere else from where you are your location your territory notwithstanding you can rise from there please pay attention because what i show you will disarm principalities and powers what i show you will tame life and you will play life like a chess people will only look forward to your downfall as a prophecy that has failed already you are you are standing with stability you are not afraid of your results they came by light Let me tell you this, any dimension you step into, not by understanding, you will be afraid of the results. Because the boundaries of the spiritual knowledge that should give you confidence and stability is not there. A car comes to you and you are afraid. What if it spoils? Will another one come? But there is a body of knowledge that when you know, it gives you stability. If God says give the car, you will give it number one out of faith, but number two out of understanding of not just God alone, the economy of the system has been open to you. The major assignment of a believer is growth. The major assignment of a believer is enlightenment being brought through the power of light to a spiritual dimension where ignorance fades away. Not boastfulness, not arrogance, but you come to a place of stability. I know whom I have believed. Ah. And I am persuaded. See, there are things when you tell me today, it is going to be stupid for me to be worried about. No. like the future of the ministry like what makes you believe that in the next five to ten years the ministry will be standing strong okay. 
You see, fear truly comes because of ignorance. There are things I've found in my life like gems. And I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, dear ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the spirit that enlightens, brings light, may that grace open you up to light. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. See, let me tell you, when you talk, there will be mockers. There will be foolish men who think you are a talkative until you see the unlimited power these are keys they are not suggestions they are keys they are backed up by god's integrity they are not backed up by a professor a governor a president a monarch this is god we are talking about here please sit down I feel sad and respectfully speaking I submit to you that I feel sorry for any man in our generation today who ignores access to this body of light he has only signed himself and his generation to a life of pain and tragedy I don't care who and I don't care what arrogance is back of that ignorance there are truths when you ignore it's a generation that pays for it it's not an individual listen you are hearing the things that you are hearing blessed are your ears revelation says for they hear these things the truths that you are hearing are a word that is coming to Jacob and is coming for the sake of Israel when God wants to visit Israel he finds Jacob and sends a word to Jacob and it lightens upon Israel thou will show me the path of light for in your light we see light who can claim to see when God has not shown you light what are you seeing Job 29 and verse 3 Job 29 and verse 3 please let's hurry up let's work together media Job 29 and verse 3 Job is speaking now. When his candle did what? Shined upon where? My head. Not upon my feet. The first assignment of the light of God is not your feet. It's to shine upon your head. To take away that darkness. That vagueness. That assumption. It may be an age-old age -old assumption, but it's still an assumption. A popular assumption is still an assumption and then he says and by his light I walk through darkness that a man can find his way out of light and you find your way and stand in a position where your life becomes a living wonder not that you walk miracles you are one yourself a living miracle your life is a message whether you are preaching or not this is what God is making you become. And listen to me. You don't become it just by wish. You are exposed to an organized body of spiritual knowledge. Understand my choice of words. Not every spiritual information makes men. There must be an organized body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the various dimensions of God that you want to see manifest in your life. When you learn this, let me see the power, let me see the cause, let me see the yoke, let me see the enchantment, let me see the divination, let me see the scourging tongues of men and the ill wishes of men that sustains the power to keep you down. It no longer exists. You will know how cheap darkness is when you stand from a point of spiritual illumination. It is true that when the light shines in darkness, truly the darkness does not comprehend it. Where we are right now, we have to admit, is a product of an inaccurate understanding of the body of knowledge allocated for the results we desire. Please hear me. 
I'm careful to say this thing because sometimes it looks like pride. You hear people prophesy, I did this, I did this, and favor came. And for me, it's not the testimony. Do you know what you did? And can you do it again? Any result that cannot be reproduced is not a real result. You can stumble into results. But sustainable results that dumbfound the pride of this arrogant age must come by knowledge. Apostle, you don't understand my situation, that's why. If you were in my shoes, no, sir. I respect your pain, but I admit to you, your pain is proof of the dominion of darkness. Let light come, and you will watch what happens. Because every desire that we have, there is an allocation, an allocation of it, based on the word of God. And if it is not captured in my life, I must admit that there is something I do not know. The earlier you admit that there's something you did not know, the better for you, quickly. Don't wait till you fail for a long time. The moment you start failing, stop, stop, stop immediately. And say, I'm not continuing until I'm sure of what I'm doing. That way you will redeem time. Many people fail for many years. They are humbled by life before they have to come back and say, okay, I didn't get it. Let me get it now. You will thank me for the truths that I share with you. You will thank me for the truths that I show you. Hallelujah. Now let's explore some keys of the kingdom. Number one. There's part one and there's part two. The first key is found in Genesis chapter one verse one. Everybody read the first four words. Please shout it as loud as as you can. First four words. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. One more time. Last time now. This is the first law. When God does not begin a thing, it has failed. In the beginning of anything is not knowledge. In the beginning of anything is not skill. In the beginning of anything is not connection. In the beginning of anything is God. Hmm. I am Alpha Omega. Don't call me to join something you started. If I do not begin it, my commitment is not there. I show you a powerful secret. In the beginning of your business, God. In the beginning of your marriage, God. In the beginning of your exploits. In the beginning of ministry. This is a secret that has changed my life. Anything God does not start, He will not back. He has to start it as Alpha. Because when he starts it, you will use his methods. You will not use your method and call on him to back it later. Our proud world today thinks God is only useful for spiritual life. When they want to do business, they take God out. When they want to do ministry, they take God out. Love and relationship, they take God out. Everything, they take God out. But I show you the first four words. Keep it there, please, media. This is the first spiritual law. That I want to show you tonight. In the beginning of my life, God. In the beginning of my ministry, not passion, not desire, not assignment consciousness, God. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. I don't see myself, I don't see my achievements. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen. 
In the beginning of my marriage or my desire to marry beauty, you are joking, you will pay for it. The beginning of my desire to marry a macho, handsome guy with a job with NMPC, you will pay for it eventually. In the beginning of my business intelligence and a well accredited mentorship, you are, you are failed already. The first secret to excelling in life is for God to not be a participant but the alpha of all that you do. Don't call God to participate in an idea that you finish with yourself. You organized it, you chose your life partner. You chose how many children you will give birth to and you say, God, come and bless it. No, God does not work like that. You started your business. You chose your location by yourself. You even bought the first consignment. As soon as it arrived in Nigeria, you say, Lord, here it is. It's yours. It's not his own. You started your ministry, decided where the church will start. You already ordained pastors. You called members. You called everybody and you say, Lord, behold your, 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 your assembly. No, sir. The great know the secret to lifting. They don't move. Moses said, do not send us away from here. We cannot start this journey yo, if your presence will not go with us. We are wasting our time. He didn't say if our weapons don't go with us. He didn't say if our gold. A man that had gold had weapons. Yet he's saying these things are mundane. God, if you will not go with me, please don't send me. How shall they know that we're people that are separated? And God says, you got it. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. The Bible says, for with God, all things, for with God. Not for when you are moving and you say, okay, God, why are you leaving me? Oh, yeah, now come and hurry up and join. And then you say, God, come. No, sir. Lord, where are you? If you will not lead, I'm not going. I'm not going. Lord, if you will not lead me in ministry, I'm not going. Is it not written in your Bible that if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want? No. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He said, I am the vine. Don't be confused. We are together, but you are the branches. You are not the vine. I am the vine. You are connected to me, but you are the branch. He distributes it very clearly. Our dominion is shared dominion. Not dominion that is derived by our own strength. It's a secret that I've worked with in my life. My brothers and my sisters, I have no business going where God is not going. It is not my concern at all. The pressures of life will push you to many things and places where God is not. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What looks cheap now will be costly when you start paying for it. When we are about to start this ministry, having done everything by the Spirit, three days before Koinonia would start, we had done crusades. We had been in ministry for a while. But before Koinonia would start, I still went back for a retreat. God, please, one more time. Are you the one speaking? And are you still leading? I tell you the truth. If God said no, that would be the end of it. He must lead the way. When he leads the way, you will follow. Now, thanks be to God who causes us like a blind man how many of you have seen a blind man walking accurately it's not because he can see he's following a man who can see and the man will lead him many people do not know this dimension of god we start things by emotion and then we ask god to join when things begin to backfire and god says no 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 you're on your own start with god in your life and watch your life turn into a sign and a wonder no matter how bad it looks if god says i am there 
go. 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 I remember years ago the things that we now walk in. God said so. And I said, Lord, if you lead, we are going on. And look what God has done. And look what he continues to do. In the beginning, God. Please, return to the place of prioritizing God. Don't use God. Let him lead the way. Many of us only say yes to God if we said yes to it already. You just say, God, just help me confirm. No, you must be flexible. Lord, is this ministry your will? I've been in it for 10 years, but talk to me now. If it is not you, I'm closing it this night. Many of us, our ego will not allow us to be that obedient. Is God speaking to us? In the beginning, God. Let God start your life. So whatever happens, you can say, God, please, I'm here. If God directs you and grants you approval and you get married to a wife and that lady becomes barren, two years, three years, you have a legal right to go to God with your wife. Stand with God and say, Lord, you are the one that joined us all. We came to you. You gave us the right to choose, but we returned it to you. And we say we don't trust ourselves. Guide our decision. And you guided us. Now the devil is bringing barrenness. You put pressure on his integrity. And he will have to arise. If you call me and you are around maybe a bank somewhere and you say you don't have money and I say pick the bike and come and meet me you told me already you don't have money but I said you should come by the time you come and you cannot pay the bike who will pay for it I ask you to come I must take responsibility for your obedience you will always be afraid to go to God when he did not start with you what will you go and tell God now? Of course, his mercy is there. But you cannot stand now and say, Oh God, this wife you gave me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You were at the beer parlor. Under the heavy... And then on that day, you drank unusually. And it's from the standpoint of that drunkenness, you made a destiny decision. And now you have to pay for it. Of course, God is a merciful God and he can restore. But the truth is, before the restoration comes, you'll be paying for it until the word of the Lord came. The word tried him. Look at me, please. Don't be too big to allow God start. Don't feel my ego is there. I'm too intelligent. Let church not, not make me a dull person. I'm intelligent. I went to school. Not destiny not destiny you must learn to step back and say oh god of heaven i declare before you sincerely there is nothing that i know moves god like a broken and a contrite heart let god find a man who is genuinely broken and contrite he will veto whatever is wrong and come a broken heart is a real invitation for his presence are we together let me give us one more There are keys, so oh. the keys are many. You hold them and hang them like a chain, a chain of royalty, a royal diadem, and you move through life. You stand by this door, you remove one key. You open it. There are doors you don't just open, you break the door so that others can pass too. Because you can pass and the door will be locked. He has broken the gates of brass not opened it, broken it, and cut the bars of iron in sunder so that others can pass. Will I pass a door and my child will not pass? Number two. Are, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Please use this. Please use this. 
God told me something years ago and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. In other words, if like John, you agree to decrease. John said in John chapter 3 and verse 31, he says that I may decrease so that you may increase. And I, if I be lifted up, not you, if you are lifted up, you will fall. But if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. When they bowed down to Jesus, they also bowed down to the donkey that was carrying him. When they put the leaves on the ground for Jesus to walk, his feet never touched the palm. But it was the donkey that carried him. Who told you when you carry Jesus, you fail? It's an honor to let the world see him. It's something I've learned in ministry. It's something I've learned in my life. Sincerely, my desire, I tell you, is not for fame. It's not for power. It's not for money. I desire from the depth of my heart to represent the face of God to a generation. To show a generation that it pays to lift the name of the Lord. It pays to be passionate over the things of God in a man's lifetime. And I remember when God showed me a vision and I saw a generation of men. I was standing somewhere, no food, no water, they were crying. That whole generation. And I came to them, I said, why? They said, you are the reason. And I was afraid to go because a few people were looking for me. And I made up my mind that I will go. If I perish, I perish. As soon as I stepped out, I saw a giant man and he held my hands. He said, let's go. For you to be lifted, all I want is for you. For you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. When God begins your life, the passion for fame dies, I tell you. The passion to prove a point, the celebrity obsession dies at once. I want to be known so that I prove to other people I'm not a failure. It's totally unnecessary. Provided in your journey is enough evidence of the hand of God. I tell you why God does not use many people. It's not because they don't pray. It's not because they don't fast. It's not because they are not holy. Because the corruption in their heart the dimension of obsession for fame and the app. some of you as you are looking at me like this if, if a drop of anointing comes on your destiny God will not hear you again everybody must bow down to you everybody must kneel down and lie down to greet you and you will keep the person there for everybody to see before you say now you can stand up my, my dear son all this pride that continues to kill men I tell you why many people do not rise. There are some of us, we have it hidden. Some of us are boastful and outspoken about it. Others are quiet, but it's still there. Waiting for something to bring it out. That, that, that appetite to outshine is a loss that needs to crumble at his presence. In the beginning, God. And at the end of it, God. If nobody ever sees me today and all they see is God and his mighty works sincerely I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you I am satisfied I am the things that you see and hear God doing through my life and this ministry I stand and I bless him for it but let me tell you this you ask God he will tell you I have no business trying to search for fame Apostle Joshua Selman the great man of God thank God for all of those things but my brothers and my sisters I'm wise enough to know that without him I can do nothing get to that point in your life where everything 
about God is your obsession. Don't use God to get fame. Listen, let me tell you, many people leave God to try to get money and you find out how much have you gotten? How much? You have just gotten trouble all around. When God swears over you to lift you, let any obstacle clear that way because even if you are a believer, it will crush you. When God vows upon a man, listen, if you can make this vow this night and say, Lord, I give up this search for to be known. Now, sometimes it's not demonic. It's because of our background. We came from backgrounds where, and some of us, our cultures, you derive respect from the money, the jeep, the car, the house. The moment that is there, they say, ah, you are a real man. Thank God for culture, but please be born again. Please be born again. Don't just be saved. Be born again. Subscribe to another culture. Let me tell you this. When you hide behind the cross, that is the way the whole world sees you. The secret to your being seen is his being seen. When they see Jesus, they have to see you. My life is a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, share what I teach you and be wise and rise from this mediocrity in life. It does not start with just intellect. There is a place for all these things. But don't forget these first four words that start your Bible. In the beginning, God. Not in the middle, then God comes. Uh -uh. In the beginning, This is how I run my life. It is God. Oh. Everything I have belongs to Him. You never hear me say, you only hear me say my thing, just in terms of responsibility. But God knows. If He started the beginning, then anything I find there is His own before I came. My house is His own. My cars, His own. The influence, His own. The fame, His own. The anointing, His own. I'm only a steward and I remain a steward forever. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I show you why only few people ever rise in a generation. It's not Rema. It's not miracles. You can walk every miracle you know and be shocked that your influence never grows. You can have every revelation you have and move in dimensions of power never seen and be shocked that people receive your miracles and still despise you. Let all the other names fade away. Let that be your prayer. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Every other name fade away. Let's sit down. Let's start the second. The second is almost a master key, except that it submits to God too. The second is almost a master key. Listen, listen. What I'm about to share with you now will take away worry from your life. This worry about what to eat. This worry about what to wear. This worry about how you will become famous. It will fade completely and live your life. This is a revision series. You may not have gotten it the last time, but please get it now. Success is not pursued. Success is not pursued. Success is not what you look for. You will never find it. Success was designed to come just like fate. Just like fate, comet. You don't pursue faith. Uh -uh. 
you don't pursue success. Please hear me. Success is what is attracted to you by reason of who you are becoming. Not what you are doing. Who you are becoming. Please understand this spiritual law and stop wasting your time looking for mundane things that will never come. Success is not what you pursue. Seeking success is a cause. Spending your life looking for it is a cause. Are we together? Now, please look up. Let me teach. Um, come, gentlemen. Let me have six or eight gentlemen. Sit down, Pastor Alfon. Sit down. Please come. Sit down. You come quickly so that we we'll save time. Just stand this way. Stand facing me. Space yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. And you stand. Um, my friend, you stand here. Watch this, everybody. Thank you. Now, please watch this. Call all of these people the needs of men. Say the needs of men. One more time, please shout it. Say the needs of men. Call, Sam is looking sharp. Call this financial prosperity. You are all looking sharp, eh? my dear people. You are all looking sharp. Now watch this. Call this financial prosperity. That's what you are looking for. Are we together? Call this marital peace. Oh, how we need it. Marital peace. Are we together? Call this influence and fame. We need it too. Social media world. We need it a lot. Likes and follows. Call this speed. Are we together? Call this, what do you call this? Favor. Ah, koinonia. Favor. Favor. And then call this impact. Now watch this. This is me, help me, starting out my life with zero possibilities. Zero possibilities. Now watch this. Did you know how frustrating it would be for me, ladies and gentlemen, to start pursuing these things one by one? These six only represent the uncountable needs that represent success to men. And we think that the way to become successful is to isolate these things one by one and begin to seek them. That burden is too much. An intelligent God will not design success that way. Are we together now? So when you pursue success, it means if you are to spend 120 years on earth, you spend 30 years seeking, no money is even a lifetime, you spend 30 years seeking a wife or a husband, Another how many years seeking all of these things, your lifetime together will not allow you to get them. This is the cause of the fallen man. To seek things one by one. Jesus rebuked people again and again for seeking things. He says, the Gentiles run after these things. They run after, they run after. But your heavenly father knows that ye have need of it. Now watch this. This is how God designed the kingdom. I pray for you that you will get this once and for all. Now watch this. At this level, notice my prayer. I'm a prayer warrior. Oh God, open the windows of heaven. Finances, give me finance. Oh God, a good wife, good children. I will never give birth to an armed robber. I won't give birth to a thief. At this level, your prayer is valid. Because there are many things you do not know. Father, grant me favor in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant me fame. Grant me speed. And I'm praying. And sometimes I'm tempted to leave God to quickly get them. Now watch this. All these guys represent levels. Everybody say levels. They represent dimensions. Say dimensions. For every level I get to, designed by God, are the possibilities already allocated to gravitate towards my growth at that level. So human beings are in versions. Are we together now? There is a version of me that cannot be a millionaire. No. It is God's law that will stop that version from being a millionaire. It's not an attack. If I pray to be a millionaire, 
God will answer me by providing the growth that takes me to the realm where that possibility was allocated. Please understand what I'm teaching you. Now, the challenge with believers is that we stay where we are and we try to use prayer to, what are you called? Impacts. Now, I'm here oh, full of ignorance and pride and yet I want to make Benny Hinn's impact and I borrowed the impact for two weeks like a rubber ring. What happens? It will leave me again. Anything that does not come to you because of your growth must leave you. It will leave as losses. It will leave as armed robbers. It will leave as thieves. Forget about the actors. There is a law that compels that any level that you any object you get that does not resonate with your growth must leave you it's a law i show you the laws of the kingdom i show you the way we grow now watch this these guys are standing here now gentlemen this is what i want you to do for every step i take forward you to take a step forward are, are we together now watch this i am here and i was invited to come for koinonia a broke confused wearing my smelly cloth all i know is god and i have the the opportunity to sit under a heavy anointing and mentorship and now i am taught certain things watch this as the word of god is shining upon my mind i may not know what i'm doing but i'm taking a step and the things i'm looking for are also taking a step are you seeing that now all at once or this is what will happen step back when i step to your level you step forward are we together now watch this i am here right now and i move forward and these guys come now notice without prayer some results start coming because i grew there now my eye is here and it's good to look far but it's not going to come to your life listen hold on let me teach you something if Papa E.A. Adeboye today empties his account this night. Before 12 noon, millions will come back. I will tell you why. It's not because there are givers. It's not because he's a man of God. When the money disappears, the law of God will send a signal to heaven that this growth level should not have this kind of account reflect. The justice system of God must balance that destiny. This is what physics has tried to describe a long time ago. That there is a system of balance in life. It is not a lie. Please understand this. Now watch this. I sit down here as a confused Christian and if I'm not properly mentored, I quickly come here and lie down on someone's BMW and just say it is mine. If you mean it is yours with the law of process and engaging this, you are right. But you mean you want it now. Even if they give you now, there is a system design that will take it from you. See, let me tell you, it is why many people never hold on to things sustainably. They have balloon success. They open up today and shrink back again. There were certain things that it would be stupid for me to desire 10 years ago 15 years ago no growth brought it so i'm growing shakaba katosia praying every day as i'm learning a key as i'm sowing seeds as i'm building look at what i'm doing it's moving towards me moving towards me are you seeing that now a time will come where everything that i see come gentlemen i will be immersed in my possibilities I can no longer leave them. It will not make a difference again whether I give or don't give financially speaking. I've entered a realm of financial equilibrium. Where what goes and what comes, it doesn't make a difference. The only thing is just my faith with God. But at this level, when I give, I will know it. I will know something left me. Now watch this. Let me tell you what God is doing to you every week you are coming. You are right here. You may not know what is happening. Listen to me. Please, just be sensitive and pay attention. You may not know what it is that is happening to you, but this is the law of God. Man of God, 
don't sit back just admiring everybody while you are praying you are learning the principles you are learning leadership what you are doing is you are walking through life what you are looking for is also looking for you what you are looking for is also looking for you a day will come by the spirit of god hear me please that day except god is not god a day will always come that includes the anointing watch this call these dimensions of the anointing my brothers you cannot stand at this level and want to operate in the anointing and the spirit at this level no matter what impartation all this double portion prayer of course is just a sincere prayer by well-meaning people even the man of god knows it's not double portion that came on that person it just fell down so that it's just hunger that was imparted to go back to the secret place this is where Benny Hinn started and he kept growing he kept growing he has to touch everybody here for them to be imparted and he will be tired from hours of personal ministration but as he stepped up he got to a level where his word became his hands it can reach people and touch them it doesn't matter where now watch this at this level the anointing will not move till you play the keyboard, clash the cymbal, charge everywhere, till there is prayer, till the people fast, till their hearts are open. He thinks that's how God operates until he comes higher. You get to a realm where someone can be doubting you and still go under the anointing. He does not believe you. He even hates you, yet he's rising from a wheelchair. So what took him up? For every time you backslide this is what happens every time you are offended and angry i won't go to church again i'm tired this is what you are doing to yourself shifting you father sincerely this thing i'm acting is how destiny works let me tell you this business people hear me if you believe that you will imaginarily stumble into millions just by meeting a business or an investment or become just tumble into it you are joking it will leave you it is only growth that has the power to keep any possibility so the way we succeed is not what we do it is who we become there is a version of me that should not be inside an aircraft if I enter an aircraft the aircraft will throw me out are we together there is a version of me that should not have a car if I want a car, I don't look for a car. I grow into the realm where a car was allocated. So when I'm here, watch this. In this realm as provided by God, there should be cars and there should be houses. If God says, so your car and you give it, the realm itself will look for a replacement. It is God's system. There is a level that you stand, you will never have more than 500 members. It doesn't matter how many days you fast, you cannot have it. Your mind and your growth does not allow it. You can stand and be offended. The more you insult a man that has a crowd and say, what is crowd? This is what you are doing to your own results. You are authorizing the realm of the spirit to reject you when those possibilities come near you. But when you stand and grow and say, Lord, what did you show them? As the light of God is shining upon your head, you are moving from obscurity, from mediocrity. Please understand what I teach you. This is how the great rise. That's why they are not afraid of their growth. They did not jump. They grew and Jesus increased. Listen, let me tell you this. Forget about poverty and forget about all of these things. I'm not saying don't pay attention to them. Do you know you will grow and not know when this realm, the possibilities there left you? Which tailor will sew my cloth? Oh, you go around looking for a tailor, you will die looking for a tailor. Just grow. The tailor is waiting for the renewed version of you. There is a realm where a tailor has been kept to adorn you. Did Joseph look for the person who put his garment? Was he not in the prison? The garment maker was waiting for the renewed version of him. There are many things you are praying for now that have been answered already in your growth. 
let me get a jeep what is jeep my brothers and my sisters don't mock the investment of the spirit upon your life when you know this anybody that receives a miracle is like the hand of a clock rotating you start rejoicing because it's the same thing you are hearing and you know that your turn is coming see let me tell you come when you stand at this realm and people begin to pray and say we know that one day it will go down this money will go down the crowd you see the foolishness of the imagination of weak men you are not here by luck the justice of God is what backs the result at this level the only thing God can do with you is to vet you based on his eternal standard but as far as these things live in you it will never go again the only thing is that your system of accreditation and growth and vetting is not these things no matter how God punishes you please hear me these things will not leave the only way these things will leave is when you go back and you cannot undo what you already know that is the reason why Lucifer the light bearer can still make you prophesy can still make you wealthy Lucifer you can go to Satan because he stood in a position as the exalted light bearer of God and there were possibilities that were tied to his office when he fell the possibilities did not go the knowledge is still with him therefore the results still continue to come it is true it is true there is a version of Jesus that 5,000 men could not come to not the baby in the manger not the 12 year old Jesus not even the 30 unbaptized Jesus there was a version of Jesus that creation was waiting for and the father told that version creation now hear ye this version not the version in the tabernacle hear me everything you are looking for is looking for you but not this version of you so once and again your future keeps coming to you and checking if you are there and returns back and say we have not yet seen him your future is answering God so the Bible says creation is waiting waiting for the manifest creation keeps checking are they there he says they are not yet there but when you grow you will grow to a realm where creation will now see the manifestation of the sons of God please hear me there is a version of this ministry that we cannot go to at this level no there is a level of grace and power and intelligence and knowledge the future of this ministry is already waiting checking for us and saying koinonia has not arrived in that future koinonia is not yet there if we stop here god will have to make do with what is available but that's not what would have been so when we continue to grow a day will come this building will start driving us this building like a living thing will start saying go out go out of this environment and the environment waiting for us will start saying come you are ready there is a way you will grow that the house you are staying now will drive you it must drive you the key is not to start looking for another house the key is to wait you will know you are ready when the house starts driving you there are clothes you are wearing today that will run away you will not give it you will not sew it but you will not find it the same way you could not find the former ones you are wearing where were they where are they now the clothes you wore 10 years ago where is it you did not pack it in a bag and sold it where did it go to please understand what i teach you these are the secrets that the Lord brought to me and gave me rest. I don't chase things. You can stay from your room and like a magnet attract anything from the globe. Provided it is on earth, they will walk like the animals. This was the strategy that brought the animals to the ark of Noah. The animals were in the bush. If Noah went looking for them one by one, he would die there. I show you this from scripture. Noah built the ark. The moment the ark was ready, this law started calling the animals. One by one, they started marching. If animals came to the ark, 
Your money is on earth. But the hand to collect it is not this hand. There is a hand that is trained by the Lord. When you lift it from all over the earth, it will come. And usually, once the anointing starts moving, it's very difficult to contain it because the hearts of people are open. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the sound of thunder. I know this is not physical. I'm hearing a sound of thunder. Like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation. Why do I see this? It's like the sound of thunder. Thunder. It's what I hear in my spirit. It's a sound. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. The meeting is on. I'm seeing ministering spirits. It's a class of angels. I'm seeing them walk inside and outside. Just let me do what is happening. Ministering spirits. There are not many times I see these kinds of angels. I'm seeing them walking inside and outside. Ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah, ah, yeah. Sena na 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 they release your breakthroughs as they touch you. They break those chains. Nah. They are touching you on behalf of families. Touching you on behalf of families. Skatapakatabara <laughs> Katako Sabarata Bariata direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now 
for marriage direction 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 for where to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the Lord is saying take it out Lord where are those people whose destinies have been buried as I'm speaking right now inside and outside right now right now as I speak by the power of the Holy Spirit right now where you are sitting you will receive a visitation I pull it out this is a miracle service I pull it out now oh yes release that lady I see it in the spirit release that lady right now release that lady's destiny something is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. 
right now i don't know why god is just interrupting please check it check it check it right now in fact i see three people check it this is a family please we are not playing games inside and outside i'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing wendy when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina if there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly augustina The Lord is judging evil in your family. This is oppression. This is what I'm seeing. Oppression. As it's happening to you, there's somebody outside. This same anointing is touching the person outside. The second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness. Because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the lord is telling me release augustina release augustina release augustina release augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of jesus i release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify i release both of you prophetically in the name of jesus christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family god wants me to minister to you are five five people i don't know if there is a mother i'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her wrap her i command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied. Release it now as you go. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, 
he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for god so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for god so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of jesus christ and then the bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. Hallelujah. So he gave, like you give your ATM for someone to use. And withdraw money he gave he donated and Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen Jesus did not just come please I want you to pay attention it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone he came to show us how we should look so when he walked upon the earth 
he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created he was invincible the Bible records above situations above circumstance with unlimited power yet a man of extreme self-control he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the ten lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 no, no. i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true christian life a life that is completely yielded to the will of the father void of self-ambition void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ a life that is crucified with Christ are we together now and then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago we know it as the passion of the Christ it started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him john chapter 6 says except you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot be part of me you cannot have my life so while they were taking the communion they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now it's one thing to give your child it's another thing for the child to agree he can refuse jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise god there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless i told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave jesus jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about god our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they're all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name aaron kelvin just get somewhere they can sit around and 
I will attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me. Listen, please. About to destroy me. And the Bible testifies that I have no power in myself. And then someone comes. And while I'm on my way to destruction, he interrupts and he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching. This would have been you. I hope you are watching. I hope you are watching the scars. As he began to bleed, he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is I'm watching because love is a verb are we together now I am what all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but Jesus said watch my love I'm not going to make noise about it first stand back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you I will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still will not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became Adam from Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross, he was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus, Adam, the very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, it was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. 
I didn't study English. But I know that when a man says, it is finished. It is finished. It's a reality that is present and continuous forever. Not it was finished. You would have said the condition for it finishing has changed. So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is, what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the Father. We call it lack of righteousness. He said that error is finished. That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God, he said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation, my own access. Like I organize a program and I invite someone and while you are about to drive him, I say, no, 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 that's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest, he also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him. Let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. When you read down what? I am he that was dead. But now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth. Access to dominion. Access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected. Watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just god your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess or of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant. 
Listen. You did not participate in anything. But out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me, you were the one who paid that price. So not only did he die for you, you died in him. Are we together now? So in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ. Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. It's an exchange. He died for me. Now I live in him. In other words, the day Jesus Christ dies, there is no reason why I should be alive because we are in him. So my life is no longer something I get outside of him. My life is an overflow of what I have received from him. And he so designed that from that point, hence, listen, everything I derive will be because of him, in him and with him. My joy is because of him. My prosperity is because of him. Please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believers victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes. Believes what? No, no, no. It didn't say that whosoever believes anything. There is a specific thing you have to believe to have life. You can believe Jesus is a prophet. It never gives life. You can believe Jesus is a healer. It doesn't give life. Are we together? He says, believe in him. Who is the him? Who is the him? No. You see, you see where we miss it? We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said, God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father a worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye, the multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice, you may get intelligence, you may get all of this. 
I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have a, a what do we call it, a, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord. A winner. A champion. One qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says whoever believed that. Listen. Whoever believes in him. That name that was given. He said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not one depend on any external impute for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything. Within that system is self-sufficiency. Within that system is the ability to be any and everything. That life can become health. That life can become victory. That life can become wisdom. So when the Bible says we have life, it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out. No. Something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you. Please, I want you to believe this. The Bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part. Whoever believes in him the Lord, who was a savior, became a conqueror, now sits as a king. The father gave the son. The son gave his life. Your job is to receive that life. When you receive that life in reality, the Bible says certain things will begin to change. You see, the life is a programming. The moment it enters you, it deconstructs itself to different dimensions. Please listen. The life of God is not just a vague thing that comes up. No, 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 no. It is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. It is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness. Many people have not received this life. They want healing, but they have rejected the life of God. Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you. This and that. But they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money 
from Pastor Lawrence, borrow money from uh, Promise and so on and so forth. And I say, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow. You see, the life of God is not, how do I put it now? It's not like something you just put in your pocket. All right, look at this. I have this handkerchief. So we say, I have the life of God. Do you have it? Yes, no. That's not the idea of the life of God. The idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to work in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes... He begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No. I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. So wait. God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life I should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the suppose by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says, have I not said, ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. He says, but you shall what? Die like men, men. 
listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we're all ready together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So, although they read that there is victory in Christ, the truth is they don't believe it. They just know let's fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this, is a sign that he's an enemy. So, they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent never-ending contention both are wrong are we together this is prophecy but there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do but I have a role to play nobody gets saved just because Jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration are we together uh-huh the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night 
and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back i want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my think god's life and all its content is the way the life of god that can become any and everything any and everything christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom he's been made unto me strength he's been made unto me prosperity that life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that satan is a trickster he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the bible says he left jesus for a season the next time he would come he didn't come directly again he came through peter and jesus said i still detect you and the devil says do not i mean god said do not be unaware speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please because many people get up bragging i'm not under any curse i'm not under this christ has redeemed me from the curse of the lord that's not a lie but you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then he says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming um, you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception 
as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it at the response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believe i am able to heal you you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting god for all kinds of things here i'm teaching you how to get results tonight god is not a herbalist there is a participation edge me this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this, his response now he's standing up is a sign that he believes me i can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry i'm using you hope i'm sorry i'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah edge me do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god look for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir romans chapter 8 please romans chapter 8 let's look at verse 35 romans 8 35 just that one scripture and then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister romans chapter 8 35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking God, this my this have been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, if I spare not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. 
if it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son, who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the father did not give Jesus, it's like a man. Listen, it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife. And the guy said, I'm a just person. And he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a lara and says, Oh, God, you know we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, That's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen. If he took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fiber came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, uh, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying Say 
able to do just what He says He will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Yes, the part. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Cause He won't give up on you. He's able. Listen. Listen. The second prayer point, I already sense the anointing of the spirit. I'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight. Listen, please, just follow these instructions. I told you your response is where your faith is. There are things that should go. Don't just keep quiet and watch them. The Bible says, speak to the mountain. Open your mouth and begin to mention them. Don't keep quiet. Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen. It was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You ask us to come. We have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. Put pressure on his integrity. We have come, oh God. That you prove yourself. Shake it up, Baba Baba Rada Baba Baba. Shake it up, Braska Daba Lada Baski. We have come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now keep standing, everybody.
before we continue there are people here I don't want you to waste your time and I don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the Bible says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. He said, and that life is in his son. He says, he who has the son has that life. Please, we're out of time. We have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, I have heard your word. I have been struggling with this thing. But tonight, I truly want to dedicate everything. My all to Jesus Christ. Or you are saying, man of God. I have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you died for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat. keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ 
he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and say no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty clothes in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them let's do it quickly please one minute everybody if you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes 
It's been streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones Please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers help them. If I were you, I would begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your requests very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit, now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, so let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen 
a small village, the border between Kwara State and Ekiti State. And I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life. I saw the obituaries of people. Listen. 132 years. 120 years. It's like nobody died except they were 100 and something. And in my mind, I was saying, Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long. And the, the interesting part of it, listen, is that the people, they are not on glasses. Their dentitions are still exact. They don't use crutches. They are walking firm. One of them was a senior apostle that died last year, 132, serving in the ministry. Alive and doing well. When I saw those obituaries, I said there must be a grace for longevity. There, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity. And I told the guys, I said, when we're coming back, we're stopping here. You can trust me. Oh, the law of honor. As soon as we got there, we stopped and we came out. We went to the women. They could not understand English. Please, quickly, with a request. And we told them, we said, we're pastors. We went to minister in equity and we're going back to the north. But we discern that there is a special anointing, a strange grace for longevity. And we want them to release upon us. And then a lot of things happened that I may not say here. And then they took us to one old man. And the man just sat on his chair. When we went, they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity. The man looked at us. He said we should all kneel down. And we got down on our knees. And this guy began to pray and prophesy. It's on record. I'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play. It was in Yoruba. I didn't care what he was saying, Ejimi. All I know is that he was speaking a language. And my spirit was receiving it. This guy kept prophesying. Releasing that grace and that mantle. Upon that territory upon us. I said, that's right. I knew that there's no mistake about this. The moment we finished with him. Honored him, so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room. She just opened the door. And I saw pictures from one side to the other. She started showing me the pictures. I thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age. You know, like Keturah. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses. No crutches. No nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called afe babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary 
he just died 141 I said I got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating I didn't see any hospital around here I just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of God you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the, the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that I always believed it but now that I've seen it ah, there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football I just remember that old woman I said plane you are joking I'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families. All that have tied the destinies of men down I'm going to pray I tell you I sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens I like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of God father your word says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of Jacob shall receive their possessions therefore I pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the Lord is giving me an instruction I see at least up to 33 people the Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands the moment that happens I'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families Lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved I stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now 
right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shiba baba kata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it back at is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies Jakatarata, mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray
go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ father we turn go ahead and pray Lord my request is turned into a testimony I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place in the name of jesus we command the foundations of the earth we command the firmaments we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request we lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of god's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of jesus mighty and everlasting god standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus and end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open deaf ears open destinies moved forward in the name of jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of jesus we thank you lord because speedily according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can I saw a spirit and, and I'm praying for the students now please listen when I was outside ministering I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names I pray for everyone here the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction I want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of Jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has died in your hands I command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed 
and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a man too the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely 
because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you